Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Holder, it is provable uh, beyond a reasonable doubt, in my judgment, that Maine Justice had actual or constructive knowledge of gun walking, both in Fast and Furious and beforehand, and I'm going to prove it to you. March of 2010, DOJ, not U.S. Attorney's Office in Arizona, DOJ assigned a prosecutor to Fast and Furious. March 2010, Gary Grindler, who I believe is your chief of staff, knew about straw purchases and Fast and Furious and seizures in Mexico. And it doesn't take a very good prosecutor to ask how weapons got from Phoenix to Mexico. July 2010, a memo to you through the acting deputy AG, that memo specifically mentioned Fast and Furious, it specifically mentioned straw purchasers, it specifically mentioned 1,500 firearms supplied to Mexican drug dealers. That's July of 2010, 1,500 firearms. April 30, 2010, a memo from Maine Justice employee Weinstein to Lanny Brewer. ATF let a bunch of guns walk. And then the rest of the email is worrying about the negative press connotations that may have come from that. Not how to fix the policy, but how to mitigate negative press consequences. October of 2010, Jason Weinstein and James Trustee swapped emails and specifically mentioned gun walking. And Mr. Attorney General, that email is so illustrative of our frustration with the notion that Maine Justice did not know about this. I'm assuming that James Trustee is a Maine Justice employee. Am I correct? I believe that's correct. All right. This is the email. And they're specifically talking about Fast and Furious. And in fairness, they also mentioned Laura's Tucson case. They say it's a tricky case given the number of guns that have walked. But it's a significant set of prosecutions. The email back to that is, I'm not sure how much grief we're going to get from gun walking. It may be more like people are finally going to say, we went after the people who sent guns down there. Now, lay aside the merits of that argument. How can you deny that people in Maine Justice knew gun walking was going on before that February 4th letter was sent to a member of Congress? That doesn't even get into the wiretap applications. That doesn't get to the factual predicate that a member of Maine Justice would have had to have read all of this is before February 4th. That whole series of evidence predates Mr. White sending a letter to Congress denying the tactic. So my question to you is this. Who participated in the drafting of the letter? Well, first, the, um, there, you know, there's, this is going to be one of those rare instances. You're right. Um, there was knowledge within the Justice Department of gun walking. It was related to a wide receiver. And Mr. Everybody. Attorney, with, with, with respect, I, I don't like interrupting people, but with respect, several of these emails specifically mention Fast and Furious. I'm not talking about wide receiver. Love to have that conversation some other time. Well, these emails and memos specifically mention Fast and Furious. They mention Fast and Furious, but do they mention gun walking and Fast Yes, and they do. No, That's I'd, my point. I'd like to see those. Those I, I would like to see. We I, got them from you. So, I, I mean, we well, got them from Maine Justice. Let, let's, let's do this. I, I've, gonna, I've promised to give you all some information. I would really like to see a memo that says gun walking and Fast and Furious. I'd like to see that one. Well, I, <laughs> If you're looking for a, prior, video, if you're looking for a videotape confession, I probably can't give you that. But what I can give you is an email from two Maine Justice employees back and forth, specifically mentioning Fast and Furious. It's a tricky case given the number of guns that have walked. I don't know how it can be any clearer than that, Mr. Attorney General. And my point is this. The February 4th letter. Uh, the, the gentleman will suspend. In order to get to the truth, we're going to take a five-minute recess and have the documents given to the Attorney General. I've got too many people behind him trying to give him instructions on what it was and what it wasn't. We will – nobody leave. Please, uh, please get the documents to the Attorney General. Take what time you need. Use my conference room if you need it. Well, I can stay here. We can stay here. Yeah, we can stay here.
Would everyone take seats? We are going to reconvene as soon as the ranking member is back. As we reconvene, I understand that the Attorney General's people are comfortable with what the document is and the source. Uh, I would ask for an additional one minute for the gentleman to, uh, to go through, restate the document, the source, uh, and so on. Uh, this is important that all sides know what is being asked, whether there are assumptions of validity, truth, and, and so on, and testimony that may accompany it. So uh, with, with that, the gentleman from South Carolina may resume. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, and in keeping with my open file discovery policy, uh, I gave him my documents. They have my notes on them. I'll go back through the uh, the list again. And, and I would also point out, Mr. Attorney General, there are several memos and emails I did not include because reasonably it could be argued that they dealt with something other than Fast and Furious. Although keep in mind, my question, what I said I was going to prove is that DOJ knew fast and furious, and beforehand that gun walking was a tactic, because the letter Mr. Weitz wrote was not specific with respect to gun walking. True or false, DOJ assigned a prosecutor to fast and furious? I believe that that's right, that there were people who went down, one or two, I'm not sure, who, who went down to help with regard to that prosecution, that, that, that matter. Uh, true or false that Mr. Grendler uh, attended a debriefing on Fast and Furious where his own notes indicate the seizure of weapons in Mexico. I, that is, if you are talking about, I don't know, debriefing, if you are talking about the meeting that he had with the folks from ATF, I guess in March of 10, 2010, is Yes, sir, it is March. And there is a note uh, in, in cursive handwriting, Fast and Furious, and there was a map attached to that of the seizure of weapons in Mexico. And my point was it doesn't take a very good prosecutor to ask how the guns got from Phoenix to Mexico. Yeah, and Mr. Grindler has testified and indicated that what happened in that meeting was that he was briefed on operation, on the operation, was told that it was essentially a, a successful operation and no mention of ta tactics came out of that meeting. All right. There was a memo to you through the acting deputy AG from the National Drug Intelligence. Uh, I can't call his name because I don't have my copy of it. Yeah. Fast and Furious is mentioned specifically. Straw Michael. purchasers are mentioned specifically. And 1,500 firearms are mentioned specifically. This is a, um, what we call a weekly report, and I have testified this about this and I don't know how many times. Um, I have gotten, there are a number of these that come from NDIC, and just for the record, it is from Michael Walther, who is the Director of National Drug Intelligence Center. Um, and these things just talk about uh, what is going on with regard to operations. Again, there is no mention of tactics in any of these. There is no indication that inappropriate tactics are being used in connection with the um, underlying investigation, and that is why these things were not brought to my attention by my staff. Well, it mentions 1,500 firearms and it mentions straw purchasers. And, and Mr. Holder, despite the, the protestations of some of your staff behind you that you are being treated unfairly, I, I never once said that you were aware of it. I said Maine Justice was aware of it. I suspect you didn't draft the letter on February 4th. My question is, who participated in the drafting of it? And, and I am out of time, so I will go ahead and ask the second question. After that, I, I would hope perhaps at some point, Mr. Chairman, I could ask the rest of the questions I have. But here are my two questions. Who participated in the drafting of it? Because the criminal chief head, Lanny Brewer, was in Mexico contemporaneous with the drafting of the February 4th letter advocating gun walking. I get that image, that, that visual image of a letter being drafted denying gun walking while the criminal chief at Maine Justice is in Mexico advocating for gun walking. The gentleman's time has expired. The Attorney General may answer. Okay. Um, I, in terms of who drafted the February 4th letter, I mean, that is obvious from the materials that we shared with you, those 1,300 pages or so. I mean, oh, I, don't, I can't call all the names. But you will really see, I think, virtually everybody, if not everybody, who was involved with the Justice Department in the creation of the February 4th letter, so you could review that. 
I don't think it's correct to say that while the letter was being drafted that Mr. Brewer was in Mexico advocating for um, gun walking. He was in Mexico, and I think you're talking about a February 2nd um, email or report of, I guess, from the State Department that indicated that what he was talking about was the possibility of a surveilled uh, delivery of weapons to people who would take them to the border and an arrest made at the border and, interestingly, on the Mexican side of the border because the penalties that exist in Mexico for gun uh, trafficking, for straw purchasing, are higher than they are here in the United States. And that's what he was proposing, not gun walking, but something very, very different. Uh, it was something that was raised but ultimately never carried out. Well, I, think, I think the gentleman, I apologize, there's no 